Show Me Something draft for week 18. It begins now. Peter, you are up. Uh, Show Me Something, Trevor Lawrence. You know, the Jacksonville quarterback has a toe injury. He's not going to be fully healthy. Who knows what modern medical science is going to do to try to help him get through this game. But this is the game that you were brought to Jacksonville to win. Now, a lot of people would say, well, hold on a minute. Hold on a minute. Winning a bad division is not the game you were brought to Jacksonville to win. You got to take steps. This is Trevor Lawrence's second year and his first year under his savior coach, Doug Peterson. So take the correct steps. The first step is winning a game to win the division and to say, ding dong, the Titans are dead. This is the game that Trevor Lawrence was brought to Jacksonville to win. Very important game for him on Saturday night. He needs to win it. Show me something, Trevor Lawrence. Show me something, Sam Howell. He'll get the start on Sunday in what could be the last game of Daniel Snyder's tenure as owner of the Washington Commanders. And at a time when NFL teams seem to be rethinking the model of identifying young up-and-coming quarterback, giving him a giant pile of money and hoping for the best and sometimes experiencing something less than the best, why not embrace the possibility that Howell could be the guy for a few years at a very low rate? This is his opportunity to give the commanders something to think about before they embark on their latest quest for someone that they can pay a lot of money to to not be the answer at quarterback. Mid-round rookie, affordable deal, opportunity. And given the fact that he looks a little like John Belushi, to put a ball of mashed potatoes in his mouth, punch his cheeks, and spray them all over the Dallas Cowboys on Sunday. So show me something, (laughs) Sam Howell. Show me something, Jared Goff. And I don't mean to repeat what I just said before. But Jared Goff, this is the time that you need to show the world, a national TV audience, Game 272, that it's a new you. You've shown it's a new you the last eight weeks of this season. Mike, how about this? Last eight weeks, Jared Goff, 15 touchdowns, zero interceptions. Is that the Jared Goff we got to know and love late in his career with the Rams, early in his career with the Lions? No. That is the new and improved Jared Goff, and I think he plays very, very well in Green Bay Sunday night, but I got to see it. Show me something, Jared Goff. Show me something, Tyler Huntley, the fourth alternate at quarterback for the AFC Pro Bowl squad, somehow. Lamar Jackson injured again late in the season, hasn't practiced since that injury happened in early December in a win over the Broncos that Huntley engineered. It hasn't been pretty. They haven't been great, but they still are in position to finagle with a win on Sunday, a possible home game in the playoffs if they win the coin flip, if they're the sixth seed and the Bengals are the three seed. It's exhausting just to summarize where the stakes are for the Ravens. But it's all irrelevant if the Ravens lose. Tyler Huntley gives them their opportunity to win and gives the Ravens something to think about, Peter, this offseason when some decisions are going to have to be made about the future, short-term and long-term, of Lamar Jackson. Show me something, Tyler Huntley, and you may show the Ravens something along the way that they like better than their alternatives at the quarterback position. Show me something, Kenny Pickett. Now, Mike, you may have thought you won this week with rigmarole and then coming in on the outside with finagle. But I am going to, sh- I'm going to see your rigmarole and see your finagle, and I'm going to raise you a super incumbent. Okay, super incumbent. Uh-huh. Something that sort of hangs over the festivities, okay? The super incumbent issue on Sunday is twofold for the Pittsburgh Steelers. And I say, show me something, Kenny Pickett, okay? And the reason I say, show me something, Kenny Pickett, is that... Hanging over all the festivities are two things. Number one, is Kenny Pickett your guy for the future? You're going to be playing a good pass rush in a pressure game because this pressure game may mean a playoff 
spot for the Pittsburgh Steelers. But the other thing that is super incumbenting on the festivities Sunday is Mike Tomlin's incredible record. The Pittsburgh Steelers are 8-8 eight and eight right now. They have never had a losing season in the decade and a half that Mike Tomlin has coached this team. So Kenny Pickett, it's on your shoulders on Sunday. Show me something. Play not only for yourself, for your team, but play for your coach. The always winning Mike Tomlin. Show me something, Lovey Smith. Specifically, show me that you know how to embrace the reality that with just one more loss, the Texans will have the first overall pick in the 2023 draft. And we have a precedent here. It was 2014 when Lovey Smith was coaching the Buccaneers, and all the Bucs had to do was lose one more game to secure the rights to Jameis Winston with the first overall pick in the 2015 draft. And the Buccaneers were leading the Saints by double digits at halftime. And what did Lovey Smith do? He removed half of his starters to the amazement of Sean Payton, who was hearing in his headset <laughs> all of the different numbers that were coming in, like a bingo dealer on meth with all the different 21 in for 23 and 27 in for 24, and this one's in for that one. And the reality is this. The first rule of Tank Club is don't talk about Tank Club. But there is real benefit <laughs> in being the worst team in football. And, and the Bears are doing their part by starting Nathan Peterman in their quest to win the first overall pick in the draft. So show me, Lovey Smith, that you're capable of settling into that hot bath of stink and being the team that gets the number one overall pick in the draft next year, even if you may not be the coach come next year. Hi, it's Mike Florio. Thanks for watching PFT on YouTube. Hit subscribe for the latest news and analysis from Pro Football Talk.